Hi and welcome. This is the first part of a series of videos on file handling in C-sharp. This video series tutorial will be comprised of five parts, which will include this video, which is an introduction to file handling in C-sharp, handling text files in C-sharp, handling binary files in C-sharp, handling memory streams in C-sharp, and using the file system watcher class in C-sharp. This series of videos is the 22nd and final part of this C-Sharp for Beginners course. Once the C-Sharp for Beginners course is completed, this channel will produce a free advanced course on C-Sharp. Please click the subscribe button and ring the bell so that you can be notified of future releases. Right, file handling in C-Sharp. With the release of the cross-platform .NET runtimes, namely .NET Core and Mono, one set of code written in C-Sharp can potentially run on multiple types of platforms. For example, your code might implement basic functionality that simply writes to a text file and reads text from the text file. If you want this code to run on multiple platforms like for example Android, Mac OS, Linux, iOS, as well as Windows, the best way to ensure that your code will run on these platforms is to reference the standard libraries. These libraries contain common components across multiple versions of the .NET runtimes, namely versions of the .NET Framework, .NET Core, and Mono runtimes. Microsoft provides us with a project template that contains a reference to the standard libraries that will be supported on multiple diverse platforms. Please view this web page, which contains comprehensive content, including this useful table that is a breakdown of how components in versions of the .NET standard intersect with, for example, versions of the .NET Framework, .NET Core, and Mono runtimes. So I'm going to demonstrate creating a solution that contains a project with a reference to the .NET standard libraries. And I'm first going to do this on a Mac platform. So let's firstly invoke the Visual Studio 2019 for Mac IDE. Note that I'll mostly be using Windows throughout this video series for code demonstrations on file handling in C Sharp, but seeing as we are talking about cross-platform portability of C Sharp code, I thought it would be appropriate to create this basic example on a different platform than Windows. I'll then port this code to a Windows platform so that we can test the C-sharp code that leverages the standard libraries on two different platforms. Let's click the new option. Note that there are items in the left pane under the heading marked multi-platform. Under this item, we can select the item marked library. Then in the middle pane, we can select the item marked .NET Standard Library. Let's then click the Next button. Now we are being prompted to select which version of the .NET Standard we wish to choose for this project. OK, for this project, let's select the latest version of the .NET Standard installed on this computer, i.e. version 2.1. Let's click the Next button and name this project Basic File Handling C Sharp. Let's click the Create button. And as you can see, Visual Studio has now created an infrastructure for our project based on the .NET Standard Library project template. If we look at the left pane and click the arrow next to the item marked Dependencies, a node marked Framework is presented underneath Dependencies. Let's click the arrow next to the item marked Framework. And under the item marked Framework, you can see a reference to netstandard.library version 2.1.0. So this means we are referencing the appropriate standard .NET libraries in our project. Excellent. So we have effectively created a cross-platform infrastructure for our code using the .NET standard library version 2.1.0. So let's remove the default class file that has been included by default in our standard library project by Visual Studio. So right-click the item marked class one in the left pane, then select the context menu item marked remove. So this dialog box is giving us the option to remove the class one project from our project or delete this file from our hard drive. Let's select the delete option. Let's create a new class. So let's right click the project node in the left window pane. Let's select the add context menu item. Then let's select the new class context menu item. So in the left pane of the new file dialog box, ensure that the item marked general is selected. In the middle pane, let's select the item marked empty class. Let's name this class 
text file functions. Let's then click the button marked new. Great, and we can now update our new class with our code. For this introduction to file handling in C-sharp, let's keep the functionality of this class very basic. At the top of the code, let's create a read-only string member variable named underscore root path and assign it the return value from the appdomain.currentdomain.base directory property. Let's create a string member variable named file name and give it a default literal value of text file example1.txt. Let's update the constructor which includes a string parameter. Let's name this string parameter file name. The code within the constructor simply assigns the passed in value to the member variable named underscore file name. Let's create a basic method. Let's name this method write text to file. It does not return a value and contains one parameter. This parameter is defined as an array of strings. Each of the string items in this array will denote a new line of text that will be written to the target text file. Let's create a new object of type StreamWriter. You can see that there is a red squiggly line under the StreamWriter class reference. This is because at the moment our code does not contain the appropriate system.io namespace directive. The StreamWriter class is part of the system.io namespace. So one way of including a directive indicating that we wish to use the member of the system.io namespace in our code in Visual Studio is to hover our mouse pointers over the red squiggly line and then select the link marked Show Potential Fixes and then select the Using System.io pop-up menu option. So this effectively adds the Using System.io directive at the top of our code. This directive could have of course been included manually. Let's use the path.combine method to combine the file name and the directory path as one string and pass this as a value, representing our target text file, as the first argument to the StreamWriter constructor. Note that path is a public static class that resides in the system.io namespace, and the combine method is a public static method that is a member of the path static class. The second argument we are passing to the StreamWriter constructor is a Boolean value. Let's set this value to true to indicate that when we write a line of text to the target text file, that we do not wish to overwrite an existing file, but rather wish to append the text to the end of the existing file. Note that if the target file does not yet exist, code within the StreamWriter class will automatically create the target text file. So we have written the code that will instantiate the StreamWriter object. The reference to this instantiated object is named output file. Let's create for each loop code to traverse the string items in the line string array. Within the for each loop, let's include code that calls the write line method on the instantiated StreamWriter object to write each line in the lines array to the target text file. Note how we have included code that both instantiates the StreamWriter class and writes text to our target text file as part of a using block. The using statement ensures that the close method is called on the StreamWriter object once the relevant operations have been performed on the relevant file. The StreamWriter object implements the iDisposable interface, which means the object instantiated within the using statement is automatically disposed of once the operations within the using block are completed. So this is syntax that provides an elegant way for these essential tasks to be performed without having to write explicit code to accomplish this, i.e. by explicitly calling the close method and subsequently the dispose method on the StreamWriter object. Note that Visual Studio has added a dotted line under the using keyword. If we hover our mouse pointers over the using keyword, a pop-up message states that I can simplify the using statement. So if I click the show potential fix link, then click the use simple using statement pop-up menu item, Visual Studio reformats our code. The way the code has been written is perfectly valid, but the way the code has been reformatted by Visual Studio is a little bit more concise. So next, let's write a method that will read all the text currently in our text file and return this content as a string to the calling code. Great. So in the interests of time, I'm going to go fairly quickly through the next part of this video, so don't worry about following along. 
A link to all the code created in this tutorial can be found below in the description. So here I'm adding a .NET Core console project that references the .NET Core 3.0 .NET runtime. And the code written in this project will serve as the calling client code for the code we have just created in our basic file handling c .NET standard project. Let's name this project Playing With Files. So I'm going to fast forward the writing of this code. Let's make sure that we include a reference to our basic file handling c -sharp standard library project which contains the file handling code we created earlier and include a directive at the top of our code to the basic file handling c -sharp namespace. To summarize, this code prompts the user for the name of the target text file, then prompts the user for three lines of text. These three lines of text are written to the target text file. All the text in the target text file is then read into a string, the screen is cleared, and the text is displayed to the console screen. So let's test this code. Great. Okay, I'm going to upload the solution to GitHub using GitHub Desktop for Mac. I'm now going to use Remote Desktop to move on to my Windows PC and use GitHub Desktop for Windows to clone the project that we created on the Mac platform from the appropriate GitHub repository. Let's then open our solution in Visual Studio for Windows. Let's first make sure that the Play with Files .NET Core console project is set as the startup project in our solution. Note that a class library project cannot run on its own. Let's run the code on the Windows platform.
great. I hope you have enjoyed this introduction to file handling in C Sharp. I know the last part of this tutorial skimmed the surface on a few aspects fairly quickly, but we will be going into more detail regarding file handling in C Sharp in the subsequent parts of this tutorial. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and leaving a like. It will be greatly appreciated. Please feel free to share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. The code created in this tutorial can be downloaded from GitHub. Please see a link to the appropriate repository below in the description. In the next part of this tutorial, we'll go a bit deeper into handling text files in C Sharp. Thank you and take care.